Hey guys, let's go back to the video. In this video, I'm going to be ranking all five of the Phase 4 MCU movies. With the release of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Phase 4 has five movies. So in this video, I'll be ranking them from worst to best. Before we get into the videos new in here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and notifications on if you enjoy all the content I've been making here on the channel. If you guys want to check out all my other Multiverse of Madness content, such as my ending explained, spoiler free review, spoiler review, all those breakdowns, they're all linked in the description down below. But the way to more time, let's get into it. So in fifth place is Black Widow. This was the first movie released in phase four of the mcu and i'm gonna be honest this movie is all around just lackluster in my opinion it is the most average of average movies i have this one at a five out of ten it is probably one of the most average movies i've ever seen and i will be honest the first half of this movie is actually really really fun and really really good but then the second half of the movie once it gets to the family stuff it's mainly only carried by florence Pugh's performance and other than that this movie is just absolutely mediocre the first half of this movie was giving me real winter soldier mission impossible seven vibes it was just going on and on and on and everything was just topping itself the rooftop fight everything is just awesome but after we get to the introduction of her dad it kind of gets downhill from there and it never really gets back up i think this is one of the worst villains in the entire mcu with the dude that looks like Danny devito and then the taskmaster twist all of it is just absolutely mediocre the only redeeming quality is the action and even then only the action the first half is really really good but moving on to fourth place i do want to note that fourth third second Second and first are all really good movies in my opinion these are all movies that are actually like my top 15 in the entire mcu black widow is near the middle to the bottom it's just again average as it can be but in fourth place is shang chi and the legend of the ten rings i absolutely love this movie i think it is one of the best solo origin movies in the entire mcu and just as a whole it is really really good the action the combat everything is just so perfect it really just went back to that hand-to-hand -hand combat from winter soldier it's just having these super intense and like close quarters battles they really just make me feel super engaged into the movie and i think shang chi did it really really well simu liu is one of my favorite additions to the mcu and i think he has such a bright future ahead of him i can't wait for shang chi too as well as hopefully the legend of ten rings spin-off show on disney plus i also want to point out that i think this movie has some of the best side characters in the entire mcu with his sister katie i also think wen wu is top three or top four mcu villains i just uploaded my marvel villains tier list so if you want to check that out link the description down below but again i just absolutely love shang chi i actually do think wenwu is the most underrated villain in the entire mcu he's just so so cool and also the last act the super fantastical moments of this movie i just i can't believe they really went there and i'm happy they went there because that's like one of my favorite parts of the mcu now i can't wait for them to do more with that and i completely see the complaint where people are saying oh it's too out of this world especially compared to how grounded this movie was in the first half and i have to agree it is really weird like the transition was kind Kind of jarring between the two parts of the world but again i just think it works really really well i was surprised that the mcu went that deep into the fantastical route but i'm actually really happy for it and i can't wait for shang chi's future in the mcu overall i think i have shang chi at about an 8 out of 10 in third place and i think this is going to be a big surprise to everyone is going to be eternals i've already made a full video on eternals and i absolutely love this movie i think it's the most underrated movie i would say in the mcu it is just so so well done in my opinion i know a lot of people just hate on this movie all the time but i think it's actually really really well crafted i do feel like at times it can be generic mcu but the points in which it's not generic mcu i feel like it really goes out there especially with the questions it asks and like the emotions that this movie gets out of people it's like the whole icarus twist the stuff with cersei i think cersei is like a pretty mediocre like primary protagonist but i think the eternals as a whole when they come together they're actually really really good characters the dynamics between everyone is really really good i'll say my favorite character in the entire movie overall Raw is Icarus because of his twists and his character development all that kind of stuff but personally I would say Barry Keegan's Druig is the best I think for example Makari's running effects they're really really cool Kingo is absolutely awesome in this movie I don't really know how to explain why I like this movie so much I've only seen it three times but I don't know it just something about that movie really just hits for me I think it's that question of like would you sacrifice one universe's life for trillions more lives and I think it's a very very interesting question to ask and no other thing in the MCU has really asked that up until Doctor strange now but even then that question hasn't necessarily been given to the forefront just yet i think it will in the future of the multiverse and stuff like that but i don't want to get too deep into that again the action of this movie is also absolutely awesome the final battle is one of my favorite final battles in the entire mcu i will say at, at times it does feel a little bit too grand and that emotion of the action doesn't really hit with me at some points but overall i just i really really like this movie but i think overall i am going to give eternals a solid 8 out of 10 you know i think eternals and shang chi 
Chi are basically tied for me. On some days, I'll like Shang-Chi more. On some days, I'll like Eternals more. Now to second place, my second favorite movie in Phase 4 MCU is going to be Spider-Man No Way Home. I know it's kind of surprising that I have Multiverse of Madison number one, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Spider-Man No Way Home is an absolutely spectacular movie. My only issue with it is that like it doesn't necessarily age too well for me. Like I've only rewatched it once since it left theaters. Granted, I did watch it six times in theaters, so that's a little bit of a caveat there. But nevertheless, I still absolutely love Spider-Man No Way Home. There's only a little bit of a difference between No Way Home and Multiverse of Madness for me. And honestly, the way that Multiverse of Madness is crafted, I think that gives it the edge over No Way Home. But back to No Way Home, I do think it's just an absolutely awesome movie. I think it utilizes the cameos really, really well. It plays into this use of the multiverse and all of these different aspects, and it meshes it all together really, really well, in my opinion. I think this will be one of the few cameo-driven movies in the future of the MCU that'll work, because a lot of times cameos, like for example, the Illuminati, they don't really work too well in the grand scheme of the movie, but this movie utilized every single one of the characters really, really well, whether it was the five villains or the three different Spider-Men. It also created an emotional arc for Toby, Andrew, and Tom Spider-Man. On top of that, a lot of the villains did have good enough emotional arcs. You know, obviously Green Goblin's the main one. Then we have Doc Ock, Electro, Sandman, and Lizard. They weren't the best, but I will say Electro was good in the movie for what he was in the movie for. Doc Ock was absolutely awesome. I love that bridge fight scene, as well as the final battle as a whole. It's just all so much fun, and just the hype levels, everything was at an all-time high right there, and I, I just absolutely love No Way Home. Overall, I think I'm going to give No Way Home a solid 8.5 out of 10. I think the reason I'm putting it 8.5 to 8-ish is because I kind of want to distinguish it from Multiverse of Madness, because I think Multiverse of Madness is just on another level. But with that being said, number one is Multiverse of Madness. This one is a 9 out of 10 for me right now. I just think this movie is absolutely awesome. It is my second favorite MCU movie. I'll be doing a full MCU movies ranked after Thor Love and Thunder comes out because Thor Love and Thunder comes out in about um, two months. So it'll be pretty soon. So I don't want to do two at once. But yeah, Multiverse of Madness is just, it blows my mind. I've seen it twice now. I watched it Thursday night and then I watched it Saturday night. It is just an absolutely awesome movie. It's action packed all the way through, but it still has an emotional arc for Doctor Strange. And that's one of my favorite parts. And that's a big criticism I've been seeing is that, oh, Strange doesn't have an arc in this movie. I completely disagree. I think he has a hell of an arc in this movie. And I made a bunch of TikToks, all these videos, a bunch of stuff talking about Doctor Strange's arc. And I'll be making more content on Multiverse of Madness. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, I absolutely love Doctor Strange in this movie. And I think that his arc of kind of letting other people guide the knife, is, which is what Christine said in the beginning of the movie, letting America Chavez use her powers instead of him taking it from her, him not trusting her, he actually lets her use her powers at the end of the movie. And it just, it works really, really well, in my opinion. And again, Wanda is a phenomenal villain. If you guys saw my MC or my Marvel villains tier list, I did have her as my third overall villain in all of Marvel and my second favorite in the MCU. She is just so good in this movie. And I can't wait to see the future of Elizabeth Olsen in the MCU. I can't wait to see the future of Doctor Strange in the MCU, as well as all these other side characters like Wong and America Chavez. Again, my biggest gripe with this movie, and I've said this multiple times, the only reason I'm going into a big issue is because I have it at number one. And the, my biggest issue is kind of like the strange arc wasn't as detailed as I wanted it to be, but there's not much more detail you can get when Wanda has the same amount of screen time and you're traveling through the multiverse. Again, I think this movie is just absolutely phenomenal. Like it is action packed from start to finish. Sam Raimi's vision shines through 100%. And I can't wait for Doc Strange 3 because I'm excited to see if Sam Raimi can get into the writing room because that would be awesome. This movie, like we said in our second watch review, it feels like a Sam Raimi movie, but it feels like they kind of told him like, okay, this has to be the final product, but you can get to this final product however you want. But again, I just think Doc Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is absolutely awesome. I can't wait to rewatch it again. I'm just so excited to keep watching this movie. It is just a, it's just a festival of fun the entire time. But yeah, guys, that's it for this video. That was every single movie in Marvel's Phase 4 rank. Let me know your ranking for the Phase 4 movies in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.